So this is our review of the BMW F850 GS Adventure. The GS Adventure range is literally so world renowned and so world famous. I can't believe that this is my first time of actually riding one of these bikes. Uh, you know, I've, I've had loads of friends that have had these over the years and they rave on about them. And this is my first uh, time of using it, albeit my friends have had the 1200 version, but it's a GS nevertheless, and it's an adventure model nevertheless. And I think, you know, BMW have done a better job than anybody I can think of in motorcycling in terms of getting people to buy into a certain type of uh, style of motorcycle basically. And whether you think about the, the long way around or the GS Trophy that they run every year or their really top um, adventure schools that they have localized all over the world, you know, the GS range and models is a real machine and you've got to sort of take your hat off to BMW for that of getting so many people involved in adventure motorcycling. So basically this is the adventure sibling of what would be the F850 GS, this is the adventure model. So in effect that means it's sort of more uh, geared towards long distance adventure so it's got a, a bigger tank at 23 litres and it's got longer travel suspension as well 2 230 mil at the front 215 at the rear just a quick one as well to say that all the visuals that we got were taken prior to coronavirus lockdown while it was our intention intention to take it off road and um, which we have done i didn't have a gopro strapped to me at that time although if bmw let us have this bike a little bit longer i'd like to do sort of a separate off-road type review of it as well so we borrowed this bike off bmw because basically we wanted to shoot it with our 2020 collection um, because we've produced a load of products that uh, are suiting the adventures type rider and riders that are wanting to go further now you can find out all of the links in the description for the products that we matched with this bike but I think the pictures and video content turned out really fantastic with this bike and that leads me on to the looks of this bike I actually think it looks fantastic particularly in this rally paint scheme I think it's really nice the way that the blue matches with the gold rims the whole bike just looks really rugged and I think it looks fantastic but you know, it's kind of funny in some angles because some angles you look at it, particularly from the front, you just think that looks massive. And then on others, it's much more subtle. But you know, whichever way you cut it, this is a big bike. It's got a big presence and that kind of translates the way it rides as well. So the 850 GS Adventure starts at £11,910. This particular model has had about two grand's worth of extras fitted onto it. So it's got a rally pack, it's got premium pack, it's got the comfort pack as well. And basically that means that you get things like your dynamic ease of suspension, you get three levels of uh, heated grips, you get cruise control. Um, there's actually sat nav fitted to this as well. As well, you've got an Akrapovich cam fitted to it as well, which sounds lovely. Also, there's pannier racks fitted to this as well, which are a really, really good addition to this particular bike. So this bike, as you see it, is about £14,000, which kind of seems quite a lot. But one of the beauties with BMW and the, the kind of network that they've got, these bikes have got really good residuals. So you're always going to be able to get a good PCP deal with these. So you can get probably quite an expensive bike for not that month much a month um, if you're prepared to go down that PCP route, which I think for this type of bike certainly would be the way that I would be going um, if I was looking to buy one of these. Um, as well on the insurance uh, front, they're really reasonable. The guys from Devit have given us an insurance quote for Mr. Average, so you can find out who Mr. Average is in the description, I'll put it below. But we got an insurance quote for about £200 a year, which I think is really, really reasonable. So what's it like to ride? Well. It's actually a bike that's really growing on me and I've got to be a little bit careful because as soon as one of these bikes turns up at the Knox HQ, you know, I'll maybe take it up the road for five minutes and, 
you know, you kind of get your first initial impressions with a bike like that. And from my context, you know, I'm jumping off the sports bike. We've also got an absolute monster of an F, uh, FTR 1200 at the moment. We've got a 701 uh, Enduro bike, and you can come to some very quick conclusions, you know, as in, oh, it's not massively fast. It's, you know, it's, it's just very plush. It, maybe it's a little bit boring and it's too heavy for off-road. You can come to those conclusions incredibly quick, but the more I ride this bike, I'm really, really starting to appreciate it. On the road, and I'll talk about the on-road first, it's like no other bike I've ever ridden. This is the most comfortable road bike I've ever ridden in my life. It's such a wraparound experience, so refined, so smooth. Everything about it is smooth, the engine, the suspension, all of that combines together to make a ridiculously refined motorcycle for the road. In, in my opinion, you know, it's the kind of Range Rover equivalent uh, for the motorcycle. It's a really wrap round experience and so, so comfortable. Now, if you're going to say to me, look, hey, Aaron, we're going out for an hour's blast on a Sunday, a bit of a scratch around, which bike would I choose? Well, it wouldn't be this one. But if you would say to me, look, you know what, we're planning to do 500 miles a day for the next month, which bike would I choose? Out of any bike I've ever ridden, this would be the one, because you know you're gonna be able to hammer out mile after mile after mile um, and, and cover some serious distance on this with no, no issues whatsoever. So on this bike, you've got an amazing dash. It's like no LCD motorcycle screen I've ever seen. You've got loads of wind protection for your body. You feel really, really cocooned in this, in this bike. You've got an adjustable screen, although the thing is I would say about the adjustable screen, I, I think still it needs to be that higher, you know, in its lowest setting, it's kind of hitting me square in the neck and in the highest setting, it's hitting me square in the face. I think, you know, you maybe you can buy a, a, an extra screen to go on top of it or something like that or a replacement screen for that first one because it's not big enough in my experience the rest of it you like a cocoon it's fantastic then you've got the suspension it is on the road it is oh my gosh good it is absolutely fantastic um, i don't know whether it's the dynamic easer that's given me that experience but if it is, it's worth every penny of it. It's absolutely phenomenal. This bike wafts along the road like nothing else I've ever experienced. And you're kind of on the straights and you're thinking, God, this is so comfortable, this is so plush. I bet it just, you know, is a barge in the corners. I'm telling you, it really isn't. This bike is fantastic in the corners, really confidence inspiring. Absolutely love the way that this bike handles and the suspension package. So out of all the adventure style bikes that I've ridden, and I would include things like the Tracer 900, the Multistrada 950, the KTM 790 Adventure R, this is definitely the most refined and plush riding experience on the road. It 100% is. I think the Multistrada probably comes the closest, but this is another level again. And it might not be the punchiest, it might not be the fastest, um, in, in, in terms of the way that the engine delivers performance. But in terms of the plushness, this is right up there. And because we wanted to do a little bit of off-roading with this bike while we had it, BMW put the TKC 80 Continental tires on for us. And I have to say, these tires are a fantastic match for this bike. And if you're considering getting an 850 GS, this tire has got so little downside in terms of the road. I mean, you're really hard pushed to know that you've got um, an off-road sort of 50-50 tire. The grip is fantastic. And then, you know, when you're gonna take it off-road on the type of terrain that you might tackle on this type of bike, they're gonna provide a decent performance as well. We've got them on the 701 Enduro. And actually on that bike, we're looking to change them out because we don't think they've got enough grip. But if you're tackling a bit more sensible terrain on this, they're, they're a really, really great tire. So the power plant in the 850 GS is BMW's parallel twin 850cc motor. It's a really nice motor and it suits the bike well. I'd really like to try the 1250 GS because I think, you know, an extra bit of punch and uh, torque would be quite nice. But really it depends the type of riding that you're into and your budget as well. The engine is it's got 95 horsepower and it's got 92 newton meters of torque. Um, it's not enough to set your hair on fire, but it does make progress really nicely. It'll sit at motorway speeds absolutely nicely. Um, but that 
kind of depends on the type of riding that you're into and stuff. You know, I think you've just got to remember that you're hauling, this, this motor is hauling best part of 250 kilos plus you, plus whatever you're going to fasten to it as well. Um, having said that, it is a really nice motor and it'll do the vast majority of what you want it to do. I'm really interested to see this motor in the F900R and XR and I think it'll be a really interesting uh, you know, combination of less weight in those bikes with a bit of a power tweak as well. I think that's going to be really, really exciting to try those bikes. So as I've alluded, the electronics on this bike are absolutely second to none. I mean, quite how I've lived without heated grips on a motorcycle, I never know. Uh, three stages you've got on this. I think they, um, they heat up probably quicker than this bike does not to 60. They're absolutely phenomenal. Um, you've got cruise control on this bike as well. And I've never used cruise control on a bike. I tried it on this 850 GS and it really matches it. Um, really, really nice feature. It's got uh, four or five different rider modes. So on the road, basically, I'm I've just stuck with dynamic because that gives the most performance. And to be honest, I personally wouldn't change out of that. I think it gives a nice performance um, and the power plant's not enough to sort of spit you off anyway. Um, and when I was doing off-roading, I was using enduro uh, mode. So an optional extra on this bike as well is the keyless entry. And while it did take me about 20 minutes at the petrol station to work out how to actually open the petrol cap, um, I think it works really well. And do you know what? If there's any manufacturer that's going to, or mo manufacturer of motorcycle that's going to try a keyless entry, I mean, BMW are going to be the most trustworthy from their car production and stuff like that. They've got a lot of knowledge in this area. Um, you know, just from a motorcycle point and my own experience with motorcycles and flat batteries, when I'm sort of like looking at keyless entries and stuff, I'm thinking, how reliable is this going to be? Um, and it's slightly concerning that this press bike that we've had, you know, every time I've gone to start it up, it up has said that the battery on the uh, key is kind of weak and needs charging up. I'm not really sure how to do that. So there's a couple of alarm bells there, but I think if any manufacturer was going to try keyless entry, BMW would be the one to do it reliably. And so far it works fantastically. And you know what? We've got a bit of a bonus for you as well. Great, so if you're a GS uh, owner or lover or whatever and you want to do uh, an adventure, you need a pretty good toolkit as well. And we found this toolkit which we've actually bought, which is called the SBV uh, toolkit. And apparently you can use the tools that come in this little package here. You can take the whole bike, every nut and bolt apart uh, with this toolkit. And I'll put the link in the description for that too. So as I previously mentioned, we have taken this bike off-road uh, as part of our 2020 photo shoot. And I did ride it around the forest quite a bit actually, but frustratingly, I never had my GoPro on at this time. And up to this point, I don't have any riding footage. Hopefully I'll get a chance after this lockdown uh, gets lifted to take it off-road and get a bit more footage and stuff. But right now I haven't got the footage, so you kind of have to take my word on it. So the GS Adventure is a big bike and it's a heavy bike too. There's no doubt in that. And it's also undoubtable that in an off-road setting, you kind of want the opposite, which is lightweight. And, you know, maneuvering this bike in an off-road setting is not that easy. It's pretty top heavy. It's quite hard to manage in an off-camber setting. And when you do drop it, like I did, in the middle of snow, up the top of a forest, it is back-breakingly heavy to pick up. I mean, no amount of technique or well-wishing or someone trying to convince us otherwise is gonna change my opinion on that. This is a heavy bike and it's bloody difficult to pick up. 90% of, of people who drop it on an off-camber uh, setting on loose surfaces are not gonna be able to get it up. I just about managed, but you know, when you do that, it does knock your confidence and it did mine when I dropped it off-road. And look, don't get me wrong, there are people at exhibitions and training schools all over the world that can ride the absolute wheels off these things. But don't get it wrong, these guys are like one in 10,000 and they've practiced for years and years and years to get to that level of ability. Um, for us sort of, you know, just general riders who are developing and haven't spent all those years developing those skills. It's just that the margin for error is, is, is just too slim. 
you know, basically. So I think you, you know, with a bike like this, that's my level of warning, basically. It's a case of choosing the correct terrain, and I'll put in some clips of terrain that I think this bike can manage, no problems. Fire trails, shale, you know, just where it's not getting too steep and too muddy and stuff like that. Um, I think it's, uh, and you need somebody with you at all times. I, I have sort of like nightmare thoughts of getting stuck in the middle of nowhere with this bike and not being able to pick it up. So you need someone with you at all times and uh, you just need to choose the right terrain. Now I think you're good to go. Okay, so once you have put this bike on the right terrain, like ideally fire trail type stuff, and you've got somebody with you, what's it like to ride off-road off on those type of environments? Well, do you know what? It's actually lovely. Um, the bike feels really planted, it's actually quite confidence inspiring, it turns nicely, it's got a really good turning circle, so if you're on flat ground you can, you know, you never feel like you're running out of uh, turning space with this bike. I think the rider mode is fantastic, that Enduro Pro, really, really excellent rider mode. Um, so you can kind of come out of corners uh, if you're on like loose surfaces, give it a bit of a handful and chuck a load of shale out the back to sort of, you know, make your mates think you're cool or something without getting too out of hand actually. I think it's really fantastic. The ABS as well in enduro mode is not too obtrusive. It's actually really nice. It's a really nice electronics package that goes with this bike and putting it in the right context, it works fine. The other thing going for it that this bike has is excellent protection um, and I mean absolutely excellent um, when I drop a bike off-road in particular I'm like you, you know it's a heart-stopping moment and you just you you're not looking forward basically to seeing what what mess is waiting for you once you picked it up well I have to say that the crash protection fitted to the GS Adventure is fantastic. There wasn't a single mark on that bike. And to be honest, there's barely a single mark on the crash bars as well. But if I was going for this one, I'd, I, I definitely would opt for the panniers as well because they, um, they do add to the protection that you get. So the protection is fantastic on this bike. And that kind of covers the off-road element of the 850 GS Adventure. I think it's, I think it's great. I think you've just got to put the right safety net in place. So pick the right terrain, have your expectations in mind and be with someone. And once, you're, once you've got all those three nailed, you can get out there and get building your confidence um, and, and go and enjoy it basically. So it's a bit, of a, a bit of a tale of two halves really. So you've got on one hand, you've got the most plush on-road experience that I've personally ever experienced and and the bike I'd be picking if you said to me look we're going to do a 5,000 mile road trip um, it is a phenomenal road bike and um, one that I'll probably end up owning one day I'm just not quite sure I'm ready for it at the moment and then on the off-road side I think you've just got a couple of compromises but do you know what in this motorcycle game and I'm learning this more and more is literally you can't have everything in one package i think you know you're gonna have pluses and minuses on different levels whether that's cost whether that's ability on road versus ability off road you, you can't get a swiss army knife that literally does everything perfectly um, and like all bikes you know there's there is a little bit of a compromise there so that's the 850 gs adventure a bike that I think is fantastic and I've really, really grown, grown to love it in the time that we've had it. Um, and I really hope as well that we can have a little bit more time with it as well and do a bit more off-roading to, uh, you know, hopefully once this lockdown's done. So look, hope you've enjoyed. Please like, please comment, please subscribe to the channel. Hit that notification bell as well. Love to hear what you think about this bike and uh, other stuff that we're doing as well at Knox. And we'll see you next time.